Yes, I am in a narrow star whole lot of ones. And it is almost a year after it was sold. Now lives down in Florida. Tail number 1111 Kilo. Anyway, this video was shot uh, a year ago when Brennan Colgrove was out, also known as Commander Colgrove, call sign Darrell, in his uh, 601P, and we decided to do some formation flying. But also part of that video was some short field work uh, that I did, and there's a takeoff out of Payne Field that's perfect for talking about the performance charts and how the airplane actually performed relative to what the charts say because I've got the video of all the distances and the markers based on taxiways. And I'll show you how to do that. And then also some really cool features that ForeFlight has to calculate all your performance data for uh, takeoff distance, distance over 50 foot obstacle, accelerate stop distance, and that sort of thing. So we'll stop in places and show you that and talk about it a little bit, but uh, let's go just enjoy this thing. It's a lot of fun. Field information call time 10530 observation wind calm visibility 10 2900 scattered ceiling 3800 broken temperature 12.4 altimeter 3037 visual purchase and use plane departing runway 16 right and left this air missions runway 16 right close out of service runway 16 right in 34 left close except for scheduled air carriers and aircraft with one hour prior approval. Pin ground, Aerostar 11111, flight at two at propeller with information, golf taxi uh, for takeoff westbound, BFR. Aerostar 11111, pin ground, are you familiar with the uh, shortcut through the central ramp non movement area? Yeah, the one goes out by uh, SunQuest. Uh, Aerostar 111, A from Diff. Yep, familiar. First hour, 111 plus 1. Uh, taxi to Christian Runway 16 left. Taxi via Bravo, Alpha, Charlie into the non movement area, and then I'll give you further instructions once you're on the other side. Okay, 11111, flight at 2. Taxi runway 16 left via Bravo, Alpha, Charlie through the non movement area, and we'll get instructions after we get through it. Ground triple uh, one. When we get through the uh, non-movement area, uh, we're going to do our run-ups over there on the ramp, and then we'll give you a call if that's okay. Remember, uh, triple one, uh, Roger, that works, and you can proceed through the non-movement area. If you just hug the, uh, keep the fence on your left and go uh, through between the hangars, that should pull you up to the run-up area by golf. Triple one. And ground uh, one 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 plus one is uh, ready to taxi out to three four uh, right. Hi, uh, Airstar one 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 uh, flight uh, ping ground runway three four right taxi via Gulf land three two zero seven altimeter three zero three seven zero three seven and uh, taxi via Gulf to three four right. Mark, I've seen information. Hotel is now current. Wind is 320 at 8. Altimeter 3037. Runway at 34. Right is in use. As you can see, this is the airport diagram for Payne Field. Payne's a pretty great airport. It's got two runways. Uh, one of them is 9,010 feet long, and then the short one is uh, 3,004 feet long. As you'll see, when you do the analysis and your due diligence before you go anywhere and use a shorter runway, you're going to see that getting in is no problem. You're taking the risk going out. So the first of the performance charts we're going to look at is the accelerate stop distance so that uh, if you lose an engine and have to shut down at the point of rotation or at rotation speed, you're able to stop in this calculated distance. Now, we fly the Aerostars a little different than that. We uh, rotate at a little bit higher speed for safety purposes uh, for the uh, loss of an engine. Accelerate stop distance would probably be a little bit higher uh, than what it's saying here. But if you follow the chart and the red lines, we're showing a 12 degree day. Uh, the airport is roughly 600 feet. Line comes across, you drop down for the gross weight, which we're at 5860, I believe and with no wind straight across, and we're just a little bit over 3,000 feet. 
The next performance number we want to look at is the ground roll. What's it going to take? How much? How long are you going to be on the ground? What distance? At the point of rotation. There was a recent accident in Germany, a very sad one, where a pilot tried to take off from a runway that was just a little over 2,000 feet long in a, I believe, a 601P, which doesn't have the power that the 700 has, and didn't make it, and everybody died. That's what we want to try to avoid, and I'm not suggesting that you use these numbers and go into a field that is uh, that the, your, your charts say you can make it out of, because things can happen. You don't want to be put, put yourself in that kind of position. You want to take the, uh, the precautions and put enough margin and safety factor into what you're doing to make sure that if you do have an issue that you're going to not end up dead. The last pre-takeoff briefing chart that we're going to look at is the takeoff distance over a 50 foot obstacle. So this is the distance, including ground roll that you would be at when reaching 50 feet after takeoff. And you run the, um, the chart the same way, you follow the red lines and go straight across and that's just above, uh, a little bit above uh, 2,000 feet. Pantera Air Star 11111 plus one, ready for takeoff three, four right. And if we get a 30 second interval for number two, that'd be great. Aerostar 11111, Pain Tower, delay approved as requested, runway 16 right, clear for takeoff. 11111, clear for takeoff, 34 right. It will be uh, VFR westbound. Takeoff for Aerostar 111. Okay, I stepped on you. Just saying we're uh, going to be uh, westbound VFR. Aerostar 101, Roger, I think I said 16 right. Just wanted to verify uh, runway 34 right, clear for takeoff. 34 right, clear for takeoff, triple one plus one. Three to go extend down and I'll call base for departure. Three down right to half three to go. Here's the fun part. Froze the video, inlaid the airspeed or the six pack on there so you can see the airspeed. So it's just after rotation at 95 knots. And we can look out to the left and orient ourselves with the hangers. And there's even a red cone out there, but with the hangers and the taxiway and so on. Then you can take four flight, go into the aerial view mode and look at a top-down picture and then take the measuring tool and measure from the runway numbers where we started from until that point and you can get a distance. It's not perfect but it's close and you can see that our ground roll distance uh, according to the measurement on the um, the image uh, it's about uh, 1417 feet. It's probably a little bit more than that but that gives you a close enough uh, view. Then the other cool thing that ForeFlight does, and this is part of the flight plan section, and if you've got a flight plan in there from one airport to another like we do here from Payne Field to uh, Bremerton, which is KPWT, and you it calculates all this stuff for you. So it knows our takeoff weight, it knows the runway because I put it in, knows the runway length, it knows the slope, it's dry, the wind I added in after getting the ATIS, so we got a little bit of help. Temperature had gone up a little bit since I did the uh, hand charts. And flaps are 20, has a safety distance factor. Now that's a really cool feature because this is just, everything has got to be perfect in order for this to work based on these numbers. So that means there's no safety distance factor. So you can add one meeting just nothing, or you can add uh, percentages on up. Um, take off 50 foot speed, 87. Now that's what the book says. That's a little slow. We rotate at 95, which is what was done here. And it says the ground roll should be 1,498 feet. 
per, or pretty darn close. And then what's in parentheses is 2030, and that is for a uh, distance over a 50 foot obstacle, which you can also see in the chart. Um, accelerate stop speed, 3037. So I had mentioned that before, it's, there's no margin. So if you lost the engine right at rotation, you're gonna go off the end of the runway. There's no question about it. And then my initial climb speed um, to get above the obstacles quickly is 100 knots. And it's kind of fun to do those because it really climbs like crazy. So more to come later, stick around till the end and I'll do a kind of a live demonstration of the takeoff performance and play around a little bit with the wind and temperature and you can see how much difference um, it makes when you've got some density altitude issues. 100 knots, best angle for a little bit. Clear stuff and we'll go ahead and transition over. Okay, here we are in four flight. We're in the flights section. You see down at the bottom tab. And what I had done initially when I came in here was, it came in here, I clicked on um, down in the uh, departure destination section. I clicked on takeoff on departure. So it's gonna bring me up the takeoff performance. And this is uh, the charting that we did before at uh, seven knots of headwind and a temperature of uh, about 12 degrees C, which is about 54 degrees. So it's showing my runway length. It shows the remaining usable length, and that's based on a factor that I put in um, showing that the airplane was about 50 feet from the actual edge of the runway where we started from. It tells you what the slope is, tells you it's dry paved, and it'll know that from ATIS, or you can change that, put whatever you want in there. Wind direction speed, I can change those. Um, otherwise, they're pulled off the, uh, the current uh, ATIS. Temperature 54, it's about 12. 
uh, altimeter settings in here. Takeoff weight, 58, 64, flaps 20. Safety distance factor. This is really kind of a neat thing because everything that we're doing here is based on everything being perfect. Our measure, measurements being great, the power coming up. Um, am I, are my engines developing full power? And I kind of like, you know, as part of an annual, um, have your prop speeds checked. I had mine calibrated and I was about 50 RPM off. 50 RPM on a 350 horsepower engine is a considerable difference in horsepower, which is going to change your ground roll and takeoff performance. So takeoff weight, um, the safety distance factor I can add, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So if I added 0 0.1 as an example, that would give me a 10% margin. So it would add 10% to, to all the calculations for a safety factor. And you can put whatever safety factor you want in there and then live by it. Uh, takeoff speed, 87 knots. We already talked about that and why uh, we like to use 95 as rotation in the Aerostars. There was a presentation I did, it's not up on the YouTube channel, um, on what actual VMC is. And it turned out that you're safer coming off the ground at 100 knots um, because 100 knots with the wings level is going to be give you a pretty good safety margin over the actual VMC in that case because VMC is actually higher if the wings are not in a three to five degree bank into the good engine. So ground roll, 1,500 feet, 50-foot obstacle speed, 95. We're pretty close. Total distance over the 50-foot obstacle is 2023. And then it's got some other speeds in here, which are pretty typical. So one of the things we wanted to do is look at what happens with the temperature change. So let's change the temperature. And we're close enough to sea level here, but let's just run it up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know why I picked that number. I just picked it. So we'll close that, and you're going to notice the changes. And I'll go down here again. Ground roll is almost 1,700 feet. Total distance, 2,276 over a 50-foot obstacle. So that's uh, pretty close to what's real. And let's take and make the wind zero. Close. Go back down here, and now we're at... Ground roll of 1770, almost 1800 feet. So that would make a 2000 foot runway feel really, really short, which is not, uh, wouldn't be fun. And then I can go to a summary, and the summary will give you everything that you need to know. And you can print this out or keep it up on the iPad if you want. So on an 84 degree, 86 degree day with no wind on that 3000 foot runway, it doesn't look so great. We're talking 1772 ground roll, 20, basically 2400 feet. Uh, over a 50-foot obstacle, which is probably pushing it. And your one engine and operative accelerate stop distance is now 3,480 feet. So that's that's up there. So even though 3,400 feet is easy enough to get out of um, on a warm day, if something goes wrong, you're going to end up running off the runway and uh, breaking the airplane. So just a real quick... Um, uh, demonstration of what four flights got available to us. Well, I hardly ever ask this, but don't forget to like and subscribe so I can do more of these. And now that I'm pretty much retired out of real estate, I'm going to have more time and I want to keep doing the, doing the videos. And once we get an airplane back, I'll do more in the airplane. Fly safe.